Hey, hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, welcome back. This is another sort of deflating and escaping atheism. Actually, we have changed the name of our project to uh, Red Pill Religion, which, by the way, Red Pill Religion, we are dedicated to the proposition that belief in the supernatural and the transcendent is normal, healthy, rational, evidence-based. So please support our work on redpillreligion.com. Uh, our webmaster got called away to some stuff he had to do, and we're not sure when he'll be back, unfortunately. It was an emergency, and he didn't have a choice. Uh, so right now you're still redirecting to escapingatheism.com, but we take Bitcoin and PayPal there. Uh, we're still very leery about Patreon. We're going to make a final decision on whether to leave that platform or not soon, I think. Uh, so please give us a like. Please give us a subscribe. Please tell your friends or enemies. Joining me today, as uh, has often so often been the case, is uh, deflating atheism. Say hi to everybody. Right, every hey, just not on any sort of regular basis, but yes. Yeah, we used to be pretty regular there, but things have gotten it, it changed around a lot. Um, and uh, but yours is still one of my very favorite channels. I wish I wish you could make videos every day for my amusement. Uh, <laughs> Thank when you. I'm, when I'm a wealthy millionaire, I will I will hire you to make. One video a day of me. <laughs> I actually have a, I actually have a story I could tell, but about a, a, a guy who actually elected to be a patron. But yeah, I'll, I'll save that for some other time. Oh, there's even people who use Patreon to mess with your mind. And when I found that out, and then they do things to promote people and not promote other people, and you know, give you donations and then pull them as a psychological maneuver. And it's like, yeah, it just seems. I don't know. We, I, oh. we, things may change. Yes, did, uh, I was actually talking about a real life donor, a guy who would actually give me cash. But but did you see uh, Dan Broadbent of a science enthusiast actually uh, is pledging a dollar a video on my channel? <laughs> see, well, that's actually pretty cool. <laughs> I, I hope he's learning to take criticism of atheist ideology since he dishes out to other people. Um, that 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 kind of gets me to you know some of the rethinking I've been doing. Uh, by the way, everybody, I you know I've told, told, I promised the team not to talk too much about these sorts of things, but I want to say that right out there, uh, there's there's a hashtag trending on Twitter called the hashtag release the memo, and I fully endorse this. Um, it, it relates to other things I've talked about, and even in a way, I think what we're talking about tonight, we'll see. Um, it's not a conspiracy theory at this point. Uh, le noted left wing commenters like Brent Glenn Greenwald and others. Are supporting the effort. They're saying that if what you know, that if they're going to show how Republicans and Trump are lying, then you should want this memo released. Everybody should want to see the memo released. It's really serious um, allegations being made that you know could affect the republic, and I'm not kidding. So please go check that out. Politics is uh, really crazy these days. No matter where you stand on these things, so. Um, okay, so in getting to the state of atheism, um, one of the things I believe, Rob, truly, and I can, I can back this up with a number of things, I haven't made a form, formal presentation, but if we go back to this interview that I did um, uh, more than a year ago, actually, although I re-uploaded it in December of last year, um, this interview with Warden Painter took me a while to get Christians interested, but I've gotten finally enough of them to at least look at it and contemplate it. If you look at this and certain other, uh, and in his book, The New Atheist Denial of History, and the things he said in this interview, it's, it's, it's not deniable that the Four Horsemen craze was, a, was an organized propaganda campaign by the social justice left more than 10 years ago. That's really what um, Dawkins, Dennett, Hitchens, and um, Harris all were. It was a planned propaganda campaign, and it was announced to coincide with a major effort spearheaded by people like Penn Jillette and T.J. Kirk, and Morton uh, Painter doesn't get into this, but other sources do, how there was an internet wing of this same new atheist phenomenon, and it was funded by ideological leftists repackaging uh, standard Stalinist talking points, I mean right down to the letter. Uh, atheist C.J. Worleman will even tell you, the, you know, and others will tell you Christopher Hitchens got played, caught, caught plagiarizing in his book, God is Not Great. And what he was plagiarizing was stuff out of the League of the Militant Godless, you know, that went back to the early to mid 20th century. Yeah. 
And, and, and so this was an ideological push. And, and a lot of people have even come out and admitted it, that they created this sort of skeptic mafia that went around. And their goal really was to uh, beat up Christians online and drive them offline. And I've talked to a lot of their victims and a few of the survivors, like Brett King, um, plus what you and I have seen and so many others have. Yes. Um, not, not long ago, to Dave the Distributist, who can't stand me, by the way, but that's all right. Um, <laughs> you know, had, a, had a stream with Noel Get, get in the back of the line, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, right? Get in the back of the line. Um, and the, the, but he's a brilliant YouTuber, but this sailed right over his head. He was in a stream with, with Noel Plum, who's one of the old guard guys, the thugs who came in to do this. The thug Noel Plum admits that they bullied Christians off the Internet. That's what they did. Yes. And it sailed right over Dave's head that that happened. These were thugs whose job was to do that, and they were trained and they were organized to do that and to behave this way. It's like an internet version of the League of the Militant Godless that was created. Yes. And it was a left wing project, um, a hard left wing project, in fact, a Marxist project. And then I think the real problem they ran into, and I, I hope a lot of them are listening to this, those that are left, TJ's gone. Um, a few others are slinking away. Um, what was I going to yeah. say about this? The money's gone. The money's gone. Um, actually, it was already figured out a few years ago that the money was gone, which is why atheism has been failing out popularly and they can get fewer and fewer people at these conferences. But based on some things I've read, and you can, you know, call it political conspiracy or not. I think the last of the atheist money dried up Yeah, uh, in the last month or so. I, I think we should uh, note that another uh, another atheist conference kind of dash conned out. It was supposed to be held in New York City. It fell through just like the Melbourne one, just like the uh, uh, Mythicist Milwaukee, which just ended up being a, a, a disaster. The, these atheist conferences are failing one by one. Hello. Yeah, you've got these young and new ones coming up, and and they're very you know optimistic about spreading atheism. But you know, I've had talks with a few of them now. Like yes. I had a fabulous talk with a, with Emperor Atheist and Shannon Q and Godless Cranium recently. And I, I I think I've set off enough cognitive dissonance in the lumber of their their people. Not that they're you know my my magic Catholic powers are making them come to Jesus, but they're starting to come with the grips with the fact that really smart people will reason their way to thinking there's God and aren't going to change their minds. Mm, and mm. once you wrap your once you wrap your head around that and that we're not deprogrammable um, because we don't want to be, because we've reached a conclusion we really believe, what next, guys? Because we weren't programmed to begin with, yes. Yeah, and more to the point, it's like uh, at some point, like I presented a bunch of scientific stuff and references they could look at and offered them more. And here's the thing, I think all of them will have to grasp is, is that if they argue against the evidence that we give, they are taking an ideological position because plenty of people are looking at the evidence that I gave, things like the peer-reviewed data on near-death experience, the, uh, a lot of the peer-reviewed data that uh, inspiring philosophies showed in neurobiology, and quite a few other people have shown it, right? He just makes fabulous videos but he gives yep. the peer-reviewed references to go with it. There's plenty of evidence in modern science that something like a soul has to exist. Um, it's, it's completely compatible with quantum physics to think that there are things that are not material that are nevertheless real, including the very real possibility that there are non-material entities that are intelligent and interact with us outside the laws of physics. It's, it's perfectly rational to think that within quantum physics. Yes. And so, uh, you know, regardless of what your opinion is, you're staking an opinion. You can't, you can't not say you're taking an ideological position to dismiss it all. Yes. Well, it, it was never, it was never acceptable to say that there is no evidence for blank, whether it be God or the supernatural. But especially now, I mean, if you're going to, your argument has to be, okay, I disagree with this evidence. Here are my reasons why, A, B, C. You can't just blankly declare that there is no evidence. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. It's cheap and it's wrong. I used to say they lie, but I'm, I'm trying to moderate my tone, but I'm saying you know, it's cheap and it's wrong. Um, there's evidence. If you interpret the evidence a different way, 
that's your business. But to, to arrogantly say there's no evidence, that's just nonsense. It's evidence I find convincing. What's your problem with it? Um, and that's the attitude I think um, atheists are going to start getting more of because not only do a lot of people think we're heroes for what we do, you and I, Rob, but you know we're being intentionally squashed. You know, we, you, I mean, I went underwent the, the atheist skeptic mafia defamation campaign from all kinds of people, honey badgers, Grim Jim, Sargon, Medicare, a whole bunch of them, and a bunch of people before that, right? They yeah. run smear campaigns on your reputation and psychological operations to wear you down and make you feel bad about yourself just for doing things. And once enough people see that you can stand up to them and say, well, I do rationally believe what I believe. I find the evidence more than sufficient. Here's why. You know, who are you to say? <laughs> Go ahead. I mean... Well, it also has to be said that that you and I actually uh, uh, don't have it as bad as people had it maybe five or so years ago when you would look at, at the likes on any Christian video and it would be da you know disliked by like a 10 to 1 ratio or something. And there, there was a constant campaign of just of just these worthless drive by comments. Uh, the the whole kind of uh, downvote brigade is not what it used to be. No, and the whole, uh, uh, spamming the comment section brigade is, isn't what it used to be either. And you know why? Because there's less money in it now. Because hmm. a lot of those those creeps were getting paid to do it, and they know it. Some of them may, be, may even hear me saying this and be feeling like crawling under a rock. Well, maybe you should. Hmm. I mean, there is. I mean, we we've seen it in some of the biggest names in atheism. These are people who take money for their opinions. And they also take money to do dirt on someone, to go out. They're doing it to Coach Red Pill now, who's an atheist who's upset the boss atheist, right? He's, he's a challenge. Coach Red Pill's like a challenger atheist, and boss Sargon has to destroy him because mm. uh, this is how these guys play, right? Uh, at least guys like, that's how guys mm. like Sargon play. You can pay somebody to do dirt on you in atheist land. It's an open secret now. Yeah, and I, I think some of the younger atheist crowd who's new to this don't know that, but they do. You get paid to be a dirty, thuggish skeptic or thug and just razz people and all that. I mean, actually, you can go out there and find a video called Five Things the Shills Don't Want You to Know uh, by How Stuff Works, and they lay out how social media campaigns like that operate. And the skeptic, the so called rational response squad, and people like Fr Free Thought Blogs were the were the first, you know, yes. wave of that. It, they were trying to claim the internet for atheism, and they were brutalizing anybody who didn't want to be atheist with them. Yes, I, I, I remember. Uh, I remember a, a, a rational response squad. They really were there at the very beginning. Like I said, they were advertising it in teen magazines and stuff, aggressively, yeah. aggressively trying to court the younger demographic demographic they had the, uh, uh, the blasphemy challenge it, that was horrible horrible stuff they had the blasphemy challenge if you recall and uh they're another group that kind of went by the wayside uh the guy yeah, Brian, I mentioned something about that blasphemy challenge yeah so basically it was a child remember rebecca watson i think that was her claim to fame if you denounce the holy spirit then you'll go to hell forever so you yeah. know she challenged everybody to do that so you look in the camera i denounce the holy spirit yeah watch me do it i denounce the holy spirit I guess that means as a Catholic, I must be going to hell forever, right? No, kids, it doesn't work that way. First off, sorry, Holy Spirit, you know I didn't mean it. And second, it's like <laughs> none of you even knows what you mean when you say that anyway. You don't even yeah. know what what, what 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 blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is. Um, it's essentially claiming you speak for God when you don't. Um, so, and, and it's not even clear that it's truly unforgivable, but that that it's meant literally, but still, um, it's worse than murderers pretending to speak for God when you don't. That's really what that means. I mean, so these people are just so retarded and they've always <laughs> been retarded. I mean, because none of the four horsemen were particularly bright. Oh, by the way, I remember Penn Jillette bragging about how they were going to take over the internet for skepticism and rationalism too. And I remember an extended period where we kept hearing in the media that, uh, you know, people were complaining about how mean and nasty people were driving people offline. And they were saying, ah, it's just words on the internet Yeah, and, and get over it. That's the way the internet is. 
And uh, you know when that changed is when certain atheists uh, were outed from the social justice left and become the, became the anti, you know, feminist, anti-SJW atheists led by guys like Sargon and Chu and, and, and Kraut and all those thugs. I'll repeat that they are thugs, every single one of them. Got no love for Shu, by the way, just because she's a cute girl. And by the way, she ain't that cute. Um, they became, they were going to be the true skeptics. And they kept up brutalizing uh, Christians um, and other religious people while simultaneously using things like Gamergate to complain that their ox was being gored, that people were picking on them, that people weren't being free to them, that people were mischaracterizing them and besmirching their character, calling the names that weren't true. All those people, Sargon, Metacur, all those people were part of that. And then they just started trying to get new businesses skeptics, you know, skeptic for hire. That's how it works. I'll be skeptical of anything for a dime. Mm. And uh, there's an old underground market for that. Guess who plays in it? Guess who will deny playing in it? Let's put it to you that way. Which of them will deny playing in it? I think they all have. Yeah. Um, we've seen plenty of evidence of that, especially since the candidate affair. And that ludicrous joke of, I know I'm just rambling, but that ludicrous joke of the Kilroy event, did it finally die? I hope it did. Um, I, I, think they, I think they tried to get some other people on board, but yeah, I, I mean, it's- It started it's, making lists of people that wouldn't be welcome. They, of course, weren't interested in my, weren't super interested in my proposal of you, me, and Brett King coming there to talk about our experiences with internet atheism. Well, we in, had, fairness, <laughs> I mean, in fairness, they had Faith Goldie and Brittany Pettibone there, so it obviously wasn't wasn't an, an atheist, uh, 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 you know, picnic time for atheist teddy bears. It got, it got crazy. There were demands for 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 cert certain of the atheists' free speech advocates. Ha! Some of those free speech advocates had squelched others' free speech in the past. Yeah. Continue to do it. Um, but, uh, yeah, they wanted non-disclosure agreements and they were having elaborate negotiations as to who would be allowed to come or not. I th think the final plug was in day when computing forever pulled away from it. But all these guys who are still associated with it are still pussies. They won't confront the fact that the atheist skeptic rationalist community is a thug community yes. or has been. I don't think the younger ones are like that. I don't think the newer ones are like that because I don't think there's money to pay a thug brigade out there anymore. Yeah, not for this sort of thing. It's what I think's happened. Well, well, I mean, with the with the kind of newer crop of atheists that you interact with, like genetically modified skeptic, they don't really seem to have the fire that the old ones had. It seems like they're just kind of half-heartedly just kind of tossing off these kind of talking points, you know? Yeah, and 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 the thing that they're all going to have to get smarter as atheists. I mean, yeah. the whole idea that atheists are persecuted. Okay, fine. You and I are really mean to atheists, but any of them <laughs> talk to us, we don't actually hate anybody. Um, we're just shit posters. Um, but the <clears throat> where but are you going to go? Are the most persecuted where, where, huh? I was going to say Christians are the most persecuted minority uh, in the world, both by atheist governments and by, by Muslim governments. So you're not adopting any sort of edgy, iconoclastic position by being an atheist. You're actually falling in line with some of the most despotic regimes that history has ever known. Yeah, and I've actually made me some Muslim friends, and I think, hmm, who would I rather, you know, be ruled by, them or those Muslims that I've met that are pretty okay? Or, you know, fucking Sargon of Akkad. And my answer is I'd rather be ruled by the Muslims. Jay, um, uh, not that I, I want to be ruled by Muslims because I particularly do not. And I, I would say no if that's, you know, I, but if those are my choices, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if you saw my my uh, little talk with JMD Apologetics 101, but he actually took uh, issue with that very comment you made. I said, well, Max, Max says things sometimes, you know. No, I do mean it because I've known some yeah. Muslims. And I'll defend it too. The Muslim thinks he thinks he knows there's a God and cares what happens. He knows he's not the final arbiter of everything. He at least thinks he knows and loves Jesus and his mother. Um, he has an honor code he lives by, and you can hold him to it. Now, there's deep flaws in the religion, but you know we do have extended periods of time where we can see see that Christians and Muslims at least were able to get along peacefully. You can mm -hmm. claim it was you know, far from ideal, and for the most part, everyone would agree, but uh, stability and peaceful relationships have been possible in various times and places. 
Um, plus, Muslims often convert to Christianity. Um, the atheism that we're facing today is completely godless, um, completely lacks any sense of scruples, morals, ethics, um, runs on demonstrably false history, it runs on demonstrably false science. It's an ideological cult, and its primary focus is the destruction of Christianity. Yeah. Everything they do is centered around it. They'll deny it, but it's true, and it's uh, and caricaturizing, and, and, and I'm sorry, just look at the body count of secular atheist regimes run by people who said, um, you know, religion is a primitive superstition backwards, holding back progress, holding back society, yeah. holding back science, holding... Uh, this that has killed more people than all religious wars combined, including the Muslim ones. Yeah. So I mean, no, I've met honorable Muslims, honorable atheists. They seem to be thin on the ground. Um, I'm sorry, but they do. I mean, I've met some. I've known some. I tried to be one when I was an atheist. That's why I always had religious friends. And that's the biggest advice I'd give all to these young YouTubers. For God's sake, make some religious friends. Yeah, because otherwise there's really I mean, what's the point of your atheist? Just make fun of people you don't know. And, and so much and, of their argumentation is just flailing against a straw man. If, if, if they actually knew what a, a Christian believes or if they can at least remember what they believed as a Christian, uh, they would not have that option of just of just pretending like Christians believe in the man in the sky. Well, and a lot of them, I will say, get, and they get scooped up into this because they come from a very primitive religious upbringing. I came from a very messed up one. Um, just realize, you know, you look at the story of people who come from messed up atheist backgrounds, and there's plenty of that too. So, you know, mm -hmm. stop relying on this, oh, I know someone who came from a religious home that was abusive, or you you yeah. came from a religious home that was abusive, and, and there's non-abusive religious homes. Everybody's... You know, the one thing about Christians is they know it's not okay to abuse the kids that way. Yeah. And a lot of people get ra raised either by these very primitive ways of looking at the Bible, Christian fundamentalism. And and, and I think a lot of them got swindled by that horrible con man, Tim, Tim McVeigh, the one who gave us the Left Behind books. Uh, that's not Timothy McVeigh. I don't know who that was. Uh, not Timothy, no. Timothy McVeigh bombed the Oklahoma City building. Yeah, no, 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 that's the wrong word. What the heck was his name? Tim LaHaye, LaHaye, yeah. Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins, those fraudulent fundamentalist Christians used in the Schofield reference Bible, King James. Oh, Speaking a bunch of, of crap, Timothy, man. Huh? Timothy, McVeigh, uh, Timothy McVeigh was an agnostic just because he's often... Uh, yeah, yeah, no, Tim like LaHaye Hall. was... Tim Le Timothy LaHaye was the man, man yeah. not McVeigh, LaHaye, L-A-H-A-Y-E. He wrote those horrid Left Behind books. And who was that other, uh, who was that? There was another uh, millennial cult. And, you know, it's really frustrating for me, too, as a Catholic, because I believe we are seeing the uh, fulfillment of prophecies going on these days, but it isn't the ludicrous... Can, can I can I share something? It's kind of kind of following up on That's what you were talking. Crap. Yeah, go ahead. No, uh, I think I think a lot of what's happened in the in the two thousands is kind of the uh, chickens coming home to roost for what was nineteen uh, nineties kind of evangelical pop culture. Because if you remember, like particularly in the late nineties, there there was this whole movement of evangelical pop culture where where parents would basically ensconce their children in this whole kind of a little insular world of all these evangelical Christian expressions. And it's not even so much to have a, a problem with, with this kind of with this kind of Christian pop culture of the nineties, but I think I, I think almost the the religion, the faith part of it almost became part and parcel of this lifestyle. Where okay, the kid is listening to Christian music. The kid is uh, watching these Christian movies, and so when they finally get out there in the world, and then they hear secular music and they see secular movies, uh, I thought I think they kind of threw the baby out with the bathwater because for them, uh, Christianity was a lifestyle. It was it was not a faith. It was not a a, a set of beliefs. So so I think a lot of that is what happened is that kids got kind of weaned into a very superficial form of Christianity in the 90s. 
And I think that's what they rejected in, in the 2000s. Yeah, yeah. And they also got taught, unfortunately, that uh, being, uh, you know, not, not treating anything as sacred was, was somehow noble, and it's actually not. At some point in the world, you'll have something you will know, even if you're an atheist, it's something you'll, uh, at some point in the world, you'll have something you genuinely believe is true, that you rationally in your heart do believe. And having people mock it just because they don't understand your logic is, is kind of nasty. Yeah. Um, that's, that's again. That's why I, I even when I was an atheist, I, I always made a point of having religious friends and at least trying to appreciate that they had a point of view I didn't share, because I might be the wrong one. And who was I to say? And I, I, John C. Wright said that made me a weak atheist. But I'm like, yeah. I, I guess it was always a form of agnosticism because I was. I always was with almost any religious person. I could say this. Look, I could be the wrong person in this conversation. Yes. Maybe you know something I don't. I can say that to a Hindu. I can say that to anybody. Even a Mormon is jacked up as I think Mormonism is. I well, I, how would I know? You're, you know, you might be right about all this. I don't think so. But I mean, why is that so hard as an atheist? This, I really do think it's a lot of them escape from really poorly indoctrinated. Because indoctrination just means teaching people. You know that, right? Um, it, it just means if you go to school and learn math, you're being indoctrinated in math. Um, but if you get poorly taught and you've got a lousy, non-scholarly approach to the Bible or to any holy work, you know, well, you, no matter, no matter yeah, what, I do think that you know, M Michael Voris calls it happy, clappy Jesus, that pop culture Jesus. I really hated it, and I always have. Um, but and I really think that pop culture Jesus stuff is empty in the end. You, you get this idea that you think there's a God, and you think you know him, and you'll enjoy reading the Bible, and then you about run out of stuff to do, and you got to put yourself in a bubble world of only other Christians to be comfortable, and yeah. it just doesn't work, right? I mean, I'm, I'm not surprised a lot of young people got turned out of that, turned off from that. Um, and and I think, no, go ahead. No matter what religious background you come from, it's never acceptable to have this attitude of, yeah, I went to, uh, I went to, I took Bible school until I was, you know, twelve. And then uh, now I know everything there is to know about Christianity, which I think is the attitude that many atheists seem to adopt. Oh, yeah. I even have one tell me, you know, I had 12 years of theological training. I'm like, you mean you went to high school, Catholic school? Because <laughs> <laughs> 12 could give me a break. And they, um, and they, still, they yeah. still end up gibbering on about invisible sky fairies. It's like, well, it's obvious you didn't learn anything, you know? Well, and that's because catechesis, the teaching of, of the rational argumentation and ideas for God has been very lacking, clearly, in a lot of Catholic schools and a lot of other religious schools. And then you get these fundamentalists start up the schools and they think you can just read the Bible and you read the Bible and if you read it with the whole right spirit of the Holy Spirit will guide you right. And, you know, as Catholics and, and, and actually as other Orthodox Christians and even some, of the, you know, the Lutherans are like, are you nuts? You don't just whip out a Bible and read it like that. Um, and that's what's so insidious. That's the other reason I don't like evangelical Christianity, because they like to peel people off and say, you don't need all that stuff. You just need to believe in Jesus and try to follow his message. And that's, uh, you know. I don't know, maybe you get a feel good after that, but eventually you're getting no guidance at all. You just read the Bible however you want to. And it, it makes Christianity look like this caricature, straw man religion that serious Christians just don't look like. Um, was I rambling too much there? Or you know what I mean? No, no, no. But yeah, I, I mean, that's that's the important thing for for Christianity, I think, is that it can't it can't lock itself into this little insular world. Uh, the way the way I'm going to go back to you know, pop culture Christianity of the '90s because I do think it is significant. I, I mean, we have to be out there in in the in the ugly, unpleasant world and and, and interact with it and engage it. You know, and that's never been a problem for me because I was not I was not brought up in the, in in a particularly churchy environment. And yeah, so I, 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 with the way I talk and the way I express myself, I have, I have no compunction about, about putting on any airs of, of, of somehow, you know, <laughs> being, being above it all. So, so that's not a problem for me, but, but I can understand for other people who are raised in different environments, it, it might be difficult to kind of let go of that habit. 
And, and there's the thing, man. I know some Christians would also be give me grief, but I mean, if I heard some fundamentalist Christian just started realizing, man, the Bible's crap. You can, it contradicts itself all over the place. By the way, Catholics would say it doesn't contradict itself at all. You just know, need to know how to read it properly. And we have rules we've been using for thousands of years, yeah. which you think are bad to have, but they, they give us a lot of clarity on how to read things. Uh, pretty a lot of consistency too, but they'll. But if you just have no guide and you expect the Holy Spirit's just going to magically give it to you, the Bible completely contradicts itself all over the place. And so, if I found somebody said, you know, abandon that kind of Christianity, I would honestly say, well, I'm good because uh, you know, I walked away from it too. If you were at least, but but the big thing is the turning the turning to atheism is like the worst choice. Yes. Yes. Well, yeah. Because I mean, really, even if you start getting, into, I don't know, some new age stuff and Edgar Casey and reincarnation, at least you're engaging your mind and curious. Yes. The spiritual, you're you're wanting to know things and learn things. <laughs> it's it's that whole I already know all I got to know because I got psychology and science mentality. Yeah. Like, Holy cow! Will you please become a firewalker? And just. Yes. <clears throat> And, and, and worship, uh, you know, a snake god for a while. You'll at least be interesting. <laughs> I, I mean, um, they're really. Oh, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, it's, uh, again, people are going to get all over me, but but with with a kind of uh, with a kind of uh, airy fairy kind of new agey thing. I, I don't think uh, uh, there's so much. I don't think there's as much danger as a, in a person experimenting with that as with atheism because atheism provides such a, a, a powerful uh, source of immediate validation for people for basically arbitrarily closing off their thought when they could just say, you know, there is no evidence for God, bam, it's like, you know, a steel door closes. And then they have this chorus of people saying, oh, wow, you're so rational and scientific. Uh, all the evidence for life after death has been debunked. It's Next. been debunked. There, look at all these Bible contradictions. I have this website. It says it right here. So, so I, I mean, that's the thing is is that is that I, there there's I could definitely understand the lure that atheism has over people, especially young people who are very insecure. They're still trying to find their identity. They're still trying to find validation. So I could definitely understand why that would be a, in immensely seductive for a 13 or 14 year old is is this online circle jerk of, of atheism at least i i don't think with with new agey stuff they're experimenting as you said they're they're exploring new ideas but i don't think it is it is the same uh, uh feeding the ego thing that there is with with online atheism hey well listen so, you said something about you know being 12 13 years old or whatever, and that's true. I will go on record as saying, honestly, I think if you've never at least considered atheism, there's something wrong with you. You're not very curious a person either. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, ultimately, you know, it really is, you join atheism so you can be right about everything. And then atheists start fighting when they don't agree who's right about everything. It's classically observable all the time. It's what's going on in the atheist community right now with all this. Uh, everybody's fighting to be right. And it's this yeah. whole narcissism phrase in addition to the, you know, the ideological incoherence of the whole thing. Oh, we're skeptics. Never mind that you can be skeptical of anything at any time for any reason at all. <laughs> By the way, I just want to say, I just want to say, in case this was not clear, uh, I was that arrogant, uh, 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 haughty, uh, little obnoxious thirteen-year-old. Thankfully, I never fell in with atheism. But I, 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 I'm speaking from that place because I can definitely understand how an arrogant, obnoxious kid who thinks he's just better than everyone could fall in with that. So I'm so here's the thing. We're seeing this in millennials. I think millennials at some point are going to have to take the red pill and realize they were sold atheism as a marketing strategy and yes. as a political ideology and as a source of instant validation. And they primarily were able to recruit fatherless children, people with daddy issues, and people who had bad religious upbringings. And they yes. were able to 
feed them with this whole narrative of fake history and I can show how a lot of the history is fake and fake science because a lot of that's fake. Uh, build up this atheist persecution complex. If you had a bad relationship with your dad and came from an abusive environment, you kind of have a persecution complex already, a just, justifiable one. I came from uh, an abusive background too. Uh, and but But they feed that. They don't give you anything healthy to do with it. They give you immediate gratification that, hey, you're atheist, you're better already, you're smarter already, you're more rational already. And it's a lie, man, especially because when your life starts falling apart, those people are nowhere to be found. Yes. Almost always. Because there's, no there's no honor in that crowd, and there's no real friendship. It's who can do for what. And that all sounds real, you know, oh, it'll all be transactional. You make me happy, I make you happy. Yeah, but that's not the sum of human relationships. It's just such a dead ideology. Yes, yes. You know? Oh my God! Get into feng shui, please. <laughs> Sorry. Well, that's 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 when you move furniture around. So so that will help you. That, the that forces that. in the universe. At least you'll be contemplating the, the the idea that maybe something operates outside the laws of physics. Maybe, yes. uh, which is a thought most of them have had closed off completely. What do you mean anything operating outside of physics? Well, we we got evidence for all kinds of things that aren't subject to the laws of physics. It's it's ludicrous how bad this ideology is. <laughs> and I think a lot of them are going to eventually see it. Yeah. I, I, I think a lot of them even have. And that's the last thing, too. I've noticed. Talk to multiple people. They'll confirm if you leave atheism. Ooh, man. They all have it in for you. And you become an unperson. And they begin bad-mouthing you like crazy. And saying you went crazy because you didn't want to be atheist anymore. How's that not cult behavior? Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, that's another thing is when atheists uh, uh, put up this posture is you know uh, my mind is is completely open to the evidence I I will I will go wherever the evidence leads but when you recall it when you you are declaring that you are part of the rational elite when you call yourself a rationalist and when you assume that atheism and scientism is basically synonymous with rationalism you more than anyone. Are not open to to wherever the evidence leads because taking taking your ideology as it is, why would you ever willingly uh, choose to explore something that you have already decided is irrational? Yeah. If you even hold up the possibility that that Christians may be right, then you've completely lost uh, any basis you have for calling them irrational or not evidence based. Why? If, you can even float it as a possibility. So yeah, maybe they have very good evidence that either I'm ignorant of or I just fail to apprehend properly because I, I'm a finite creature of, of limited under, uh, limited and imperfect understanding. So maybe these Christians are onto something after all, but that is not a, a humility that atheists are capable of. Yeah, or, or even, I mean, really, I say it all the time, and I rarely get contradicted, is Oroastrians got more truth, in my view. Hmm. Um, why, why not you know, at least learn about them? Why not get curious, you know, and why not think, hmm, maybe I won't look down on them as primitives. Maybe they have some knowledge of something I don't. Yes. Just, just a crazy thought there, you know. Well, yeah. um, you said something about red pill, and so I actually looked up a quote I had in one of my videos. But this is the this is the red pill for for the millennials who, who are now saying, "Oh, the real red pill is this. The real red pill is this. The real red pill is that the world is a far more wonderful and interesting place than you are being told." Yes, you fed a pack of yes. lies that is starving you intellectually. It is starving you spiritually. It is starving you aesthetically. You, you believe you believe in this in this paper thin, boring, soul depleting world by by basically I, I call it a, a cartel of, of of hacks basically is what they are. Yeah, and, and you, I mean you, you, that's the thing is it, they sold it. You ate it. Uh, uh, everything you based your identity on is basically a lie. I mean because it it is the least interesting worldview you can adopt. Yeah, and it, it, it comes it to all... salvation. No, no, it's 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 it, the world is not any better for people believing this completely dreary, uh, soul depleting, uh, basically worldview. Yeah, because it's all it's all just the you know you're just a product of your selfish genes that 
eventually evolved you into sentience and you're just a monkey and the yes. you know you you your your conscious awareness you don't really have it you kind of you don't really even have free will and in any case even if there is such a thing you couldn't define it and it's all ultimately an emergence effect of the electrochemistry of your brain and your selfish genes and every word of that by the way is just pseudoscience i mean like all of that is pseudoscience i can tell you how every step on that is pseudoscience and that's that's the tragedy is that the the free thought yay we we've cast off the shackles of religion and we're free to do uh, everything we want that party does not last for very long nope. <laughs> because immediately you hit up against the sense of determinism where you never you never had any real freedom whatsoever and all the all the things that you thought of the courageous casting off of the shackles of, of being this courageous man who stands up against religion and rejects God and willingly chooses this unpleasant truth uh, of atheism against the comforting lies of religion. Boy, that just all makes you feel so good about yourself. But then when you get into determinism, it makes a mockery of all that courage that you ascribe to yourself because <laughs> you never chose anything uh, to begin with. You were never courageous. That courageous is just an illusion of chemicals in your brain. And so it eviscerates all virtue from the atheistic position. And it basically makes a mockery of all the of all the virtues you ascribe to yourself. And if you really think a mother hold, beholding her newborn child for the first time is merely a squirt of oxytocin and prolactin yeah. and 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 serotonin and what and whatnot. Oh man. <laughs> No, that is, we don't even have to get into the science of it. That is pseudoscience when they yeah. say uh, uh, yeah. pleasure is serotonin, pleasure is dopamine. That is a that is a non scientific claim. The most you can say is that serotonin and dopamine correlate with the subjective states That's right. of, of, That's of right. pleasure. You can't say that they are. That that is bullshit. Yeah, yeah, they, uh, and yeah, we could keep going, but it's probably about time to wrap it up. One thing, two pieces of advice I have for atheists, the young atheist crowd who's not going to be a thug. Number one, make some religious friends who are at least as smart as you, if not smarter. Um, and make religious friends who clear to, who, who, who it's really clear aren't in a controlling cult in reality that, you know, you see people from different all walks of life on it, people with different lifestyles that are a part of it that, you know, my own religion is one of them. Others are like this too. I don't live and die by the words of my priest. Heck, I've even got priests I've quarreled with. It's, mm. it, I, it's, 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 and that's not that unusual either. That's not, in fact, <laughs> I shouldn't say this, but I mean, I talked to a very senior priest uh, earlier mm -hmm. last year, and he said, "Yeah, when I started this parish, I made someone so mad they punched me." I'm like, <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, the point is, is that we there is a difference between a mind control cult and a sane religion. I yeah. mean, and people from all walks of life in a religion, that's a sign. Another is that there's no charismatic leader telling you everything to do every day. Um, there, I mean, but, but and try and meet people who are in your fields of interest who are like, yeah, I believe in God, and here's why. Now you have a real conversation starter. You know, yes. and, and especially those of you who are worried about censorship. Um, and and political repression, make religious friends. Yes. It's worth it. It's it really is. So that's my final thought. You got any final thoughts? Well, because again, Christians are the most persecuted group in the world. So, yeah. so when 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 you think it's all edgy to uh to uh sl slander Christianity and and say oh the world the world would be a better place without Christianity that's that's ex the exact same ideology of of uh China and North Korea so it is and you're talking about me and my kid I don't Ar appreciate yeah, that just an edge lord yeah and, and and Christians are an obstacle to progress and so eventually yeah. that ideology has as motivated the slaughter of of hundreds of thousands of people but yes you in, in, in 21st century america are just are just so edgy and rebellious when 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 you advocate the same ideology
Yeah, because it's so it's so brave for you to make an enemy out, out 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 of my little boy who loves going to church yeah. and be a monster because I take him. Yeah, no, that's not someone who wants to be my friend. Um, but you know, I don't mind people who've got to change of heart. So anyway, listen, uh, tomorrow night we should have John C. Wright. I've got uh, an upload of more on uh, from Sarah Salviander coming up. Uh, please go go check out release the memo again it's it's not you you can't even dismiss it as right wing crazy anymore a number yeah. of left wing voices have joined in and said let's you know even if it's all trump administration propaganda lies let's say it so we can debunk it what you know th there's yeah. no excuse not to want this out because it's causing people a lot of concern so all right everybody please give us a like that, 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 the memo and <laughs> don't want to don't want to say too much but this uh this little rock uh, rolling down the hill might set off a, a much larger avalanche so that i be i really suspect it's gonna yeah I'll watch the next few days guys it's gonna be intense in politics i'll bet you all right everybody god bless and god bless. uh Ave Maria. <laughs>